Welcome to The Authentic Life with KL, the podcast where we throw out the rule book, where we dive in head first to the real and raw, unapologetic journey of living the best life. That includes lots of music. This is your go-to space for empowerment, for deep healing and owning your authenticity like the boss that you are. We're here to break down walls and slay self-doubt. Vibe to the soundtrack of your soul with every beat and lyric. We'll move through stories that heal and empower. You can live your fullest and most badass life. Welcome to The Authentic Life with KL. My name is Kitty and I'm with Katie Rain, known as the Pop Queen of Austin. How are you today? I'm doing good. I've been better. Um, This election has been wild and crazy. I've cried a lot. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I'm okay. I'm alive. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's been, I think it's been, um, I mean, I'm, I'm 48, so I've been around for a little bit, but I think this has been the most um, divided I've ever seen the entire country on so many different topics. And the first time I can say for so many of the topics that has affected me on a personal level as well. So it is very yeah, big deal. Yeah, it's a big deal. But as I've told many of my friends, all we can do is keep on living and keep on fighting and love each other and make art. Oh, gosh. Absolutely. Absolutely. Make art and stand together instead of doing the division thing. Just find a way for that. So I love to start the show by asking a question of what is something kind of quirky? And I know you're quirky that I was like, I love you. (laughs) But what is something people may not know about you that might help them know you a little better? Uh, I don't know. I like, I was racking my brain about this question because you sent me this, like, I like to start off and I'm so like outspoken with all of my opinions and stuff. But what a lot of people don't know is like me behind the scenes. So I guess like something that people wouldn't know about me that I've never really talked about is that I really love like my routine. Yeah. Um, I wake up at like 530 or six, like every day I have oatmeal and an energy drink every morning. I do a little workout. I get my day started. I'll do my little affirmations, Mm -hmm. listen to some affirmations, and then get ready for the day. I even do it on the weekends because my cat routine up at like 6 a.m. too. So I'm a big routine girly. I like that. I I like routine. I try so much to break out of it sometimes because I really find comfort (laughs) in my routines, you know? Yes. Well, um, so do you have, do you have a musical inspiration for your music? I, when going through your music, I was like, it's, it's a lot of different types of music. And so is there a specific inspiration you might have musically? Yeah. So that's kind of the thing that I love about music the most is that you can draw inspiration from anywhere at any time. Like, in 2024 with the power of the internet you have the ability to listen to music from what's coming out literally today to what came out you know 500 years ago Mm -hmm. and um music spans across language it spans across culture it spans across everything and so i draw inspiration from every genre of music and every era of music um from classical to edm um but really the the one like string that strings along almost all of my songs is that they're personal stories um there are a couple of songs that are kind of out of pocket that are like you know, not necessarily about my life or like it was a collective song that I wrote with my co-writers that wasn't specifically about my life. But the majority of my work come from personal stories of mine, my struggles, my relationships, my weird opinions. Um, oh. So that's that's kind of the, the string. Yeah, I love it because I was like, wait, it sounds like Katy Perry. Wait, 
wait, no, 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 this sounds like, uh, wait, punk? Is it punk? It, what is it? It's, it's all over. And I was, I really love it. And I did share with some of my group and they were like, oh my gosh, I like this kind of music, you know, and it's not just the music. It's also like all the verbiage that comes along with it, because I think people can so much relate when you write about personal journeys. Yeah. And have you always wanted to be a musician or was there a pivot point for you to where you're like, nope, that's what I'm doing. This is what we're going for. Oh, man, I've loved music since I was a kid. I was obsessed with singing. I was in choir. I was always dancing around the house, putting on performances for my parents with my like neighbor <laughs> friends that I would force into doing the performances with me. Um but really 10 years ago, I got out of an abusive relationship and um, I realized I was following other people's dreams and I wasn't following my own dreams. And I just dug really deep and was like, what do I want to do with my life? What was I here? What am I here for? Mm -hmm. And the immediate answer was music. And so 10 years ago now, um, I got sober and I started just cranking out songs um, and I haven't looked back since. So that, that kind of leads really great into the next question, because I was going to ask what kind of an impact has music had on your life through some of, say, the shittier times in life? How did you lean on that and did it impact your mental health with you being able to write music about your story? Oh, yeah, I don't know where I would be without music. I would, I probably <laughs> would have <laughs> given up by now, or I would have, you know, I don't know, like gone back to school or something. I don't know. I would have lost my mind. I would have less you. You'd be a little I less would be you with that. Way, I would be way less me. I would just, I would have lost myself if I didn't have music. Um, Music is my therapy. Music is my safe place. Music is a place where I can, one place where I can express myself freely without fear of judgment. Um, music, you know, I write songs in my sleep sometimes. I'll wake up and I'll have a song just bubbling out of my subconscious and music is more than just me mm -hmm. um it makes me believe in a higher power in like the powers of the universe it makes me believe that there's meaning to life uh period music is everything to me um it connects it connects us so much because and, and I've talked about this in other podcasts, but it's like, it's this language that either you speak it or you don't, you know, and most yeah. people do. And it's like, you can hear songs and you can connect by, oh, you know, Katie's been through that. So, so maybe I should keep going or, oh, I heard that. I think I recognize that. And you start connecting with, with things. I think that knowing that other people face the same battles, because that's something that we don't talk about as much. It's kind of, yeah. shame, you know. And when you can see other people know and they have the same experiences, I think it opens up for this like safe conversation and this space for mental health and all the struggles that everybody has. Absolutely. Yeah. I've gotten messages from people on my SoundCloud, on my Instagram, on my socials of people being like, hey, I hear I listened to your song 50 times because mm -hmm. I'm going through a breakup right now and it's helping me get through or I, you know, it it's crazy how much music connects us and makes us realize that we're not alone. Yeah. It's a beautiful medium. And one I think one of the only art forms like that where you know music can bring you to tears like mm -hmm. you don't walk through a museum just sobbing right yeah. like art is gorgeous mm -hmm. it's rare that I've looked at a painting and it's brought me to tears you know yeah. but music 
Oh, yeah. I'll hear a song that affects me and I'll be crying for yeah. days listening to it on repeat, you know? So music yeah. has this special quality about it that um, can inspire people to cry or to laugh or to dance or to, you know, push themselves to exercise, yeah. to be a better person, to... Or even the biggest compliment that I've gotten is, you know, women especially will come up to me after shows and they'll be like, I was afraid to tell my story. And now I want, I want to make music. I want to write a book. I want to tell my story and express myself. And I'm not afraid anymore because mm. you were on stage and you, beautiful. you told your story. And I'm like, Hell yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's you know? offering. I think people start to heal when they have a safe space to tell their story. And we all know it's not very safe most of the time to tell your story. Yeah. So when you feel heard, suddenly you feel like, oh, I can do this too. Yeah. So yeah, empowering other people, especially empowering other people, especially other women is yeah. an incredible gift to give to the world, even if it's just one person at a time, you know, yeah. I'm not a huge artist. I'm not, I don't have billions of streams, but like just changing one person's perspective, yeah. if they come and see me at a show, it makes it all worth it. Yeah. I had, I had one of my friends say the other day, he said, it's just a song. And I was like, it's just a song. Like you don't get, it's not just a song. Like there are songs that have hands down changed my life. And, and it's not just a song for some people, you know, and it's like, you have to acknowledge, like you went through, Katie has gone through all these experiences and she's writing about this music. And that had you not, some of these other people would never, ever have that connection, you know, with anybody else, because you stood strong to be able to tell your story and now they can too. So for some, it's just a song, but it's not just a song. <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's yeah. not. Yeah. Do you have a specific song or a few songs that you're more connected to that mean more to you than others? Ooh. Um, I know that's a hard question. <laughs> my song, my most recent song that I released, which was already of November of last year, which is crazy, uh, is called Panic Attack. Mm -hmm. And it's a song that kind of also came just as a flow of consciousness. I just started writing it. Um, I had actually arrived to the session on the brink of a panic attack because I was late, um, two minutes late to the session. They were like, it starts at seven. I got there at like 7.02. And then the just this line popped in my head. If I'm two minutes late, then I have a panic attack. Yeah. And then the whole song just came barreling out. Um, and it's a really powerful piece for me because I, you know, have talked on my social media about my struggles with mental health. I've talked, you know, in podcasts, but I had never written a song right. that had encapsulated that and and put music to it. And so that song I'm really proud of and connected to because it, you know, it really hurts sometimes being in your own head. Yeah. And I wanted people to know that they weren't alone. Yeah. Um, that was that was one of the songs I put down to ask you about. I was like, this sounds like a personal confession of I have panic attacks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what the song sounds like, and and I relate because I have high anxiety myself, and so that song is very much. It was like this sounds very much like exactly hundred yeah. percent what it feels like sometimes. Yeah, I wanted to capture the feeling of that in the music, in the background, in you know, I really wanted it to be very emotive and and kind of dark, um, but also have that like lift. Um, it was really fun to make with the producer, Mike Grubbs. He just kind of was like, let's go with your vision and make this. Um, 
So yeah, that one's really awesome. And then also my song Love Me Loud, which is on my debut album. That song is really special to me because it is probably the song that sounds closest to what it sounded like in my head when I wrote it uh, versus what the final product was. Mm -hmm. And I wrote that song with my a uh, boyfriend at the time who helped me write it. And it was a song about him um, loving me for who I am, mm -hmm. which I had, you know, had trouble experiencing before because everybody, you know, masks yeah. parts of themselves or, or might, feel like they have to hide parts of themselves in order to be more lovable, right? Yeah. You don't express yourself fully or you don't, you know, express some opinion or you don't dress the way that you would really mm -hmm. like to or you, you know, you just have to tamp yourself down a little bit, be a little smaller so that you can be more digestible and you think that that's what you're supposed to do in order for people to love you and accept you. And um, over my life, I've realized that I've done that a lot. Yeah. And that relationship that I had with um, Chris, my co-writer on that song, uh, it was the opposite of that. I was able to be my silly, goofy, yeah. crazy, wild, silly self and he loved me for it. And it was a revelation. Um, and I had to write a song about it. It just came out and I heard it in my head. And when we went to the producers, um, the final product that came out was just like what I heard in my head. So that song I'm also really proud of. And it's also a really great message to yeah. be yourself. Um, because the right people will love you it's true it's true and um I do a lot of teaching and things like that especially with women on empowerment and things like that and one of the things we talk about a lot is is we feel like we need to stay in a box to be worthy to receive love and yep. we're like I'm gonna do this wait a second wait a second no I know I don't want to make anybody upset you know due to our trauma and all those things and it's like someone who truly loves you wants to kick you out of the box and they want to watch you expand, even if they're not going to be there when you grow and expand and climb out of those boxes. And um, too many times we're so scared we're going to lose something to be who we really are meant to be deep down. And then you, I think as you go through the healing journey, you're like, I wonder if they even really loved me because I wasn't even showing them the real me. <laughs> and so yeah. you have to kind of go in and, and question those things because we hide so well when there's always someone out there to love us for who we really are. Yes, it's yeah. true. And, and yeah, not accepting anything less is a huge lesson, like to be your true full self mm -hmm. and to have your partner be their full true self and be your silly goofy selves together. It's, yes. it's something beautiful that it, it's, amazing to experience i hope everybody gets to experience that someday because it's so too that's the yeah. whole cultivating joy i often you say i'm five years old you know that's what i'll say sometimes because i'm like you have to cultivate joy you have to find joy like it, it's not just thrown at you and if you don't know what you really like or who you are authentically then you wouldn't know joy if it was dropped right in your face so you have to really start you know opening up on that um yep. The next song, so the song that I listened to very first was the song Dead to Me. Do you mind talking to me about that song? <laughs> um, because I can't, I will have to say, I can kind of connect to it. So I just yeah. wanted to ask a little bit about it, if you mind sharing a little bit of the story behind it. Yeah, so, uh, whoo, it was Mother's Day of 2021, and... I decided I wasn't going to talk to my mom anymore because 
of various reasons. Um, my mom and I, I have a younger sister. Uh, it's just us two siblings. And um, we have a very complex and complicated relationship with our mom. Uh, sometimes I won't talk to my mom, but my sister will be talking to my mom. Sometimes we both decide we don't want to talk to mom anymore. Totally and understand. <laughs> this was one of those times where both of us were like, we're done. We're done. Yeah. And um, I had a songwriting session that day scheduled with my band and I went into it and I was like, I'm not going to write a song about my mom. I'm not <laughs> going to let this affect me. I'm going to write a love song. I'm going to write literally anything right. else except for a song about my mom. And here because, we go. <laughs> because, you know, like I yeah. can't give her that attention. I can't give her that. Yeah. But of course, my bassist just starts playing this angry punk riff. And I was like, yeah. oh, I'm going to write a song about yeah. hating my mom. So, uh, yeah, it it was just one of those things. I wrote it in one session with my band and it just all kind of came out. It was all of the feelings that I had felt. Um you know, I love my mother. Yeah. Um, but you know, all of the things that are in that song are things that have literally been said between us, or things that she has said to me, or you know, it it's so hard dealing with kind of the boomer generation being a mother. And and with their inherited trauma yeah. from their parents, um, and that directly affecting you. Like I understand that my mom is now, you know, sorry for a lot of the things that she mm -hmm. did. I know that she genuinely believes that she did her best in raising me. But do I think that? I right. think she could have done a lot better. Right, right, right. No. I think there I think there were a lot of lines that were crossed and as I get older um it 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 I just look back on it and I'm like damn that was kind of messed up what happened. And right. so you know I've had a lot of conversations with close friends about you know family trauma and all of that. And I realized that a lot of other people had gone through it. And yeah. at first I just kind of wrote the song and like, didn't think I wanted to release it. But then my band was like, no, you <laughs> have to release it. Like other right. people experience this. Other people True. deal with this. It's a huge, like, even if it's not your mom, it might be your dad or exactly. another family member. And there's, there's so many love songs that have been written, right? There's so many breakup songs, but how many songs are there about, you know, going no contact with your mom? And true. I used to always say I wanted to do like a, a, a real greeting card company. That's like, crappy mother's day or you know something like that <laughs> like I was oh my god because I love my mom too but I had to really start looking at her as a person not as what I deem a mom to be you know on on my expectations for me to be able to really move through it so I was really anxious to ask you about the song because I definitely have felt that before with my siblings and through my mom and I've recognized as I get older when I draw boundaries that is like Fire. The worst. The worst. It's the worst. <laughs> it's the worst. It is. It's like I am the most horrible person. <laughs> yeah, it's so crazy. I. So yeah, to have. Yeah. A song that other people can relate to, unfortunately. Yeah. Like, uh, part of my what I feel like is like my duty as an artist and mm -hmm. as a storyteller of 
my life and my art is to tell the truth and yeah. to be radical about telling my truth and not all songs are going to be oh, sunshine pretty. and rainbows you know like life is it yeah life isn't life all is sunshine not. and rainbows <laughs> it's not and so writing songs about difficult subjects mm -hmm. is you know challenging but again you know it's it's part of therapy for me and like I know my so my mom hates the fact that the song is out not that yeah um because it, it paints her in a bad light and did you struggle with that was that one of the reasons for not wanting to put the song out because that would be one of mine initially would be like well yeah I don't really want to hurt her but I I really am like these are things I really feel but <laughs> yeah I mean we ended up we ended up going to family therapy which was a whole other story but like I told her I was like I wrote this in mm -hmm. the moment of my real feelings it is a piece of art and I am going to release it because other people can relate yeah. to it because other people have gone through similar situations to yeah. me I want them to know that they are not alone I want them to know and and I want this art to serve as it like, you know, Taylor Swift, right? She writes songs about her life. They're a little more obtuse, I guess, but there mm -hmm. are so many theories about who her songs are about, what happened, mm -hmm. the history, the lore of Taylor Swift as told in her songs. And like, I love that. I love having my songs be personal and not just mm -hmm. be like some trite like we're going to party it's yeah. a happy day like and it's I a great song but like sometimes you need like oh yeah me too me too like a me yeah. too movement is like me too I sometimes hate my mom <laughs> so yeah so she's yeah. she's pissed about it she yeah. but I was like what am I going to do? Not put it out because my mom is telling me what to do still. I'm 34. I'm not going to let my mom tell me what to do. If I want to put like, it out. Mom, I'm, I'm it out. letting it out and releasing it. So I'm not holding it in. <laughs> it's yeah. like the point. I, I'm releasing it. Yeah, I found that song that I, I was wondering about that because I was like, oh, I, I feel that I do. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have I have more songs that I have to write about that probably but we'll see what's your favorite fun song I, I know you have some that aren't necessarily maybe personal ones what's your favorite like party fun song Ooh, rad moves for sure yeah yep. rad moves is great it got song of the summer in 2018 uh on npr which was absolutely crazy it is just a feel good bop yeah. um also, my song Take Me with Donatachi is really fun. It's I think my I listened to that earlier and I was like, this one's going on. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. It's so it's so fun. Yeah. It's so feel good. It's so just sparkly and bubbly and yeah. cute. Um, that was it's a fun. really fun song. Yeah, that was a really fun song to make. And a just every time I perform it, everybody's like, what? Ah! Yeah, yeah. Yeah, how yeah. fun. Okay, talk to me about your rainbow bangs. Because I saw oh that my God. It several times. Tell me all about your rainbow bangs. Tell me kind of what they represent for you. Tell me where yeah! you can get them. Tell me all the goods. <laughs> yes. So I'm not wearing them right now. I have some in my other room, but it's okay. It's okay. Okay. So what you're going to do, <laughs> you're going to go to my shows or you can find them on Etsy. Etsy.com slash Katie Rain. I'm Katie Rain on everything. So just look for Katie Rain on Etsy. And I sell rainbow bangs. So um I've been growing my hair out. A couple of years ago, I had a completely shaved head and I was, you know, just dyeing my hair a different color every week, which was really fun, but it was doing a lot of damage to my hair. So I decided to grow my hair out. And I've been doing that. And I also have been trying to like 
Music doesn't pay the bills at this point. If I could have a green, if I could have a green shaved head and have a job where I could make a lot of money, that would be great. But that's not the reality that we live in. So my hair is brown and normal, but I wanted to get some color in my hair so that I could, you know, spice things up have a little zazz like feel a little bit more myself because I had had dyed hair for so long and I looked up rainbow bangs on Etsy there was a couple people selling them but they were like $90 and I was like that is crazy and I've seen them I've seen like the clip-ins you know for regular hair but that's such a great idea Yeah. And so I was like, I'm not paying $90 for these. I'm going to make my own. And I just loved them so much. And they were really fun to make. So I was like, why don't I just make these for like other people to wear too and have it be at a more accessible price point Mm -hmm. so that other people can wear them too. So yeah, they're all made of human human hair and I dye them all myself I can do any color but my favorite is a rainbow obviously um I have rainbow pastel rainbow I've done some pride flag ones which are really fun um I've done some custom wigs that I've dyed too like whole wigs so I don't know I've always loved doing hair and dyeing hair um and always loved color and so it just all kind of came together i also sell them at coco coquette which is a local wig shop in austin texas awesome. too so yeah, that's a great you... idea for pride i'm a like a pride vendor uh whatever yeah whatever so that's a great idea for pride no i love that yeah it's so fun yeah, so... no it's fun it's fun because you can remove it and do it but it's still like yeah it's not something i've seen before so i love it so much Oh, well, thank you. Talk to me about stuff that's coming up for you. Like what, what is coming up for Miss Katie? Oh, well, well, um, I might have a show in December. I am working on a few new songs. I'm going into a songwriting session this weekend, which should be fun. Um, and really just gearing up for new releases early next year probably because um fun thing I got laid off from my job and I've been going through the motions with trying to get more funding for making music and for you know life in general so it's always frustrating when I'm like, if I was a millionaire, I could release a new song every week and um, not be doing this struggle bus thing. But it's, it's, reality- hard. it's hard for those of us that are trying to actually live our dream. It's like very few of us are living it up like everyone thinks. It's like, yeah. no, it's struggle bus for sure. Yeah, struggle busting it. Yeah. yeah. The reality the reality is not as glamorous as it seems. Right. But I'm writing music. I'm working on music. I'll hopefully have some shows. Usually I um or at least the last two years I've played the Phoenix's New Year's show at Peace Park, which is really fun. So oh. I'll be celebrating 10 years of sobriety and Yay. DJing and performing. So that's really exciting. Um, Congratulations on that, by the way. Yeah. 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 So just chugging along, really. Um, I would love to release a whole new album, but the whole thing is securing funding. So I am yeah. just, you know, squirreling away my acorns and writing good music and trying to find homes for it. Um, I have a couple of acoustic songs that I want to release because I don't have a whole lot of those. And those are really fun. I've been practicing my guitar um, um. and playing my own songs, which is really fun. And an extra level of, you know, challenge. So yeah. Um, 
what else? I don't know. I want to just live in life and wanting to do it and just kind of waiting for the, the opportunity. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It's where it's luck is where preparation meets opportunity. Mm -hmm. So now I'm in the preparation stage yeah. and yeah. the opportunities will arise. So. Yeah, I always I always think that when everything is still, you're still growing. You're just getting ready for what's coming next. For what's coming yes, next. yes. I, I like to end the show with the question of if someone came to you that was struggling and they were just in a really dark place with depression or whatever they might be struggling with, what are some words of advice or words of wisdom you might give them? Just keep going. Yeah. It's going to get better. I know it Yeah. doesn't seem like it now, but it will. And you just got to give it time and you got to give it all that you've got and keep fighting. I mean, that's the message basically that I gave to all my friends on election night and yeah. what I can give to everybody right now. Um, anybody like I've been in really low places and I thought that it wouldn't get better and it did. And it took a lot of waiting and a lot of patience, but also a lot of, you know, my family and my community coming together and helping me. And it's not bad to ask for help. Uh, the worst thing that Hard. you can do is not ask for help <laughs> yeah. and think that you're alone. Yeah. Um, nobody is a completely alone in this world. Everybody has somebody. And you've got to find that reason to keep going, whether or not it's your pets, um, your family, your silly little hobbies that you have. For me, the highlight of my day is waking up, drinking my little energy drink, having my little oatmeal, doing my little workout and getting <laughs> getting my silly little outfit on and getting ready for the day and not knowing what to expect, but just knowing like I am here and whatever the day brings, I can handle it. Did you say that you do mantras? Yeah, my do affirmation. Have, do you have some favorite ones? Because I we we talk and teach about them all the time. Um, because I I definitely live by those too. I just wondered if you had one that was maybe your favorite. Oh man, uh, I listen to a lot of like abundance and confidence, um, meditation. So like, I am strong. I am worthy. Mm. I am capable. I am talented. I am confident. I am inspired. I am. Um, I also pray to my ancestors often. I have a couple of altars in my house. I knew you were my girl. I knew ah! it. I knew it. Um, I pray for like the ancestors of all of yeah. humanity, just not yeah. just like my family lineage, because the yeah. origins of humanity go back millions of years, and you just like it blows your mind when you think of the power of of that. So when I pray to my ancestors, I say. Um, I call upon the ancestors, the universe, the angels, the gods, the goddesses, ev all that is, all that ever was, all that ever will yes. be. I ask you to bless us with happiness, health, wealth, abundance, good fortune, love, new opportunities, um, whatever else I can come yeah. up with. Yeah, no, that's um, great. That's great. We do, uh, in, in the community that I teach, there's a, a small group that we have called Blend Your Spirit. And I call it Blend Your Spirit because it's just a cluster of all different beliefs. But in the end, it's all about energy and, and ah. all those different things. And so I, you know, sell crystals and tea and all those things and try and teach people like it's all beautiful post-it notes right around you to remind you of the badass that you are, period. How yes. easy it is up to you, but a crystal rose quartz could mean universal love, but if you don't believe in it, then let it 
then let it just be a reminder for you to love yourself. It doesn't have to be spooky. It doesn't have to be anything other than what it is. And I think that I think that all these tools that we have uh, just across the board that we don't we don't use them because everybody's too scared to like step into that and step into their own power. Yeah, I yeah. mean, crystals are great. It yeah. energy. It's the energy, energy of the earth. You know, yeah. it's all energy. We're yeah. all energy. The exactly. entire universe is energy. The fact that we exist at all <laughs> exactly. shouldn't even be possible, but it is. Right. Right. And we're here. It's a miracle. Yeah. And celebrating that miracle every day by being your truest self, by oh, following yeah. your dreams, by yeah. pushing yourself forward, by just being here and being present and taking it all in, even yeah. if day by day, you might not be at a hundred percent, but you stayed. Yeah. Come and take up space. Come take yep. up space. That way others can see it's okay. <laughs> yep. Come and it's show true. up. Well, it was so good to meet you. And I, I'm on TikTok a lot because that's where I teach. If you ever want to jump on on a Wednesday night or Monday, if you're home, I do a lot of mental health is what we talk about. So this month we're talking all about gratefulness. And I, I think we're going to start talking about why we self-sabotage and how we can prevent doing that from being grateful. But yeah. last month was grief. So we do a lot of mental health type type topics. And so I love to have people in and chit chat about it. So you're more than welcome if you ever are open. We call it work at Wednesday, not work at work at but shadow work. <laughs> <laughs> no? I love it. Yes. Yeah. I would yeah. love to be a part of it. Yeah, no, it was just so great to meet you. And um. If there's anything we can do to support you, please let us know. We have, you know, a community, a growing community, and we would love to support you on everything. Thank you for joining us on this episode of The Authentic Life with KL, where we explore the powerful intersection of healing and music. If you enjoyed today's episode, please give a follow and share with your friends. You can find more information about The Authentic Life with KL and Kitty Lynn at kittylynn.com, K-I-T-T-Y-L-Y-N-N-E.com. Thanks so much for listening.